Canada is officially becoming a communist country. A lot of people are now leaving Canada, disappointed with what is happening, especially new immigrants. And people like myself who do real estate get a lot of hate because of it. Well, it's all about communist mentality, guys. I was actually born in a communist country. Guess, guys, my birth certificate. No, it was not Ukraine. It was Soviet Union. And I escaped a country and mentality which we are facing right now in Canada. I get a lot of comments right now, guys, on my on my past video about the taxes. People are happy about Justin Trudeau imposing the new capital gains tax, which is a great such a great tool, you know, just to boost, just to get the votes, just to pretend like you are doing something about, you know, all that BS happening in the government, just to get the votes. But what it is in reality, guys, it's nothing. It's nothing. I'm just going crazy what is happening in Canada. Basically, what I see, guys, is a pure communism. You know what happened during communism? That is what is happening in Canada, but you just don't see it right now. Basically, if you start creating a division within the society where you are starting to put... Well, guys, why do I get hate? It's because I'm working in sales. That's why I wanted to say that. And sales is bad in communism because it's capitalism. So you're literally not producing any product and you're getting a commission based. So it's like evil, pure evil. That's how communism started. Okay, like one of the things you're not allowed to do, you would go to jail to is, you know, be successful or make money. So that's one of the things about communism. But I want to say what has happened in Canada is the vision of the society where now people are like, Okay, so here's a home. Look at this home, guys. There is a beautiful home standing right over here. Okay, so there is a home and there is a homeowner. You know what? This person is evil because he owns a home. I don't know who lives here. Honestly, I don't, call, I don't, I don't even care. But that's what the government wants you to think. That person is also evil because they own a home. And you know why they're evil? Because you don't own a home. Okay, and so they're dividing, the, they're subdividing the society, you know, and creating artificial program problems. Like, okay, that person is a homeowner, and let's say you are not. So that person is bad, and you are good. We'll tax that homeowner, so that homeowner pays more taxes, so that you feel better about yourself, which is ridiculous. Guys, look at this this way. I come from a country where people who studied for doctors were actually working as laborers cleaners so people who are surgeons would be getting paid as much as the cleaners did and that is the pattern that i'm sitting seeing in canada oh man you know these doctors this medical profession they're making far too much of money they should get less money and people who are in the bottom level of society who didn't want to go through the 15 years of education pass all those exams struggle and overcome all of those problems you know they they need to be supported by the government. So let's take away the money from the doctors, from the lawyers, from engineers, from those professionals who spend years in, in universities. Let's take it the, a cut from them and give it to the poor in a Robin Hood style. So we will punish the success and encourage laziness. One of the reasons Soviet Union collapsed, in my opinion, guys, is that, well, you were not allowed to own a property. It was assigned housing and it, it's so familiar with the tendencies of BS happening in Canadian government right now. Guys, I'm literally frustrated. You know, honestly, look at this this way, guys. I want to tell you my view and you tell me if you disagree with me, okay? So, for example, guys, if um, there is a landlord, right? Right, there is an investor. So they are going after investors who make housing unaffordable. The problem, real problem is, is not the investors that are buying the properties, but the government that doesn't release the land, that doesn't uh, help the builders. What is this sticky on the floor? There's some kind of, this tree is producing some kind of tree sap. It's just all over ah, my shoes now. Anyways, I'll tell you guys one second. So, stick like our government today, you know, anyways, I want to tell you something interesting, guys. Uh, they tax uh, the people who are wealthy, right? They're buying up the house. They're not building enough house. They're not doing anything about the housing, nothing productive at least. And right now what they're doing is it's, uh, frustrating. I was talking to one of the investors yesterday itself. Guys, I work into real estate. I work with those guys who buy up houses. Yeah, I'm evil like that. I work with people 
who have money, who buy up houses, who sell houses. And honestly, the investors describe Justin Trudeau as, as a thief who go, go reaches out to wealthy people's back pockets and stealing money out of their back pockets. Just like that, from people who build their equity, from people who build their wealth for years and years, decades of hard work. And guys, I want to defend investors in this video. I want to say that those people who are buying houses, they are actually so, uh, co you know, working a social cause, let's say. You know how I see it? I'll, I'll defend for a second and you tell me what do you think about it. Do you agree with me or not? So, for example, a person that is buying a house, let's say, right? Uh, they take the responsibility of, look at the house in front of me. Okay, it has, you see there, look at the house. There is a door. It has a mechanical structure to it, so that door goes up and down, there is a motor, there are hinges, there be basically there are rails on each side, uh, it, it, it's working, it needs to be maintained, needs to be serviced. There's also a spring that holds it up and down, guys, and there's a, usually a sensor on the bottom for safety as well. So all of this mechanical structure of the door, all the roof, all the siding, electrical, everything, so all of this stuff goes bad over time. The roof goes bad. It has a lifetime and a life limit. The doors, everything. The windows needs to be changed once, 25, 30 years. One window is like $1,000. So if you're an investor, you have to be responsible for maintenance and repair and the life cycle of all of this outside of the house. Not only that, we have a BS system on mortgages where you have to renew, unlike in the United States where you just get a mortgage when it's like 2% and it's there like that for 25 years. Here it's every five years they review the mortgage. So the government can increase their interest rates and screw you up any, any given period of time in Canada like that. But we'll talk in a separate video because that's what government of Canada likes to do, screwing people up. So, for example, with that property, see, I got a homeowner already st sticking out. Let's go to the next house. Okay, I'm going to make the person uh, uh, uncomfortable. Let's go to the next property. Anyways, the senior guy landlord over there, uh, I don't know, his financial situation, um, probably the owner, who may, uh, might be a tenant, but most likely an owner, an old guy, you know, and why is he bad? Because he freaking got a mortgage 30 years ago and he paid it off. So now we have to tax him for that, okay? <laughs> Anyways, let's go to the next property. Uh, I'll tell you in a moment, you take the responsibility of taking this mortgage, of interest rates going up, of paying for all of this, of maintenance cost. You have, you're stuck with the house. If the prices went down, you're screwed. You're by yourself. You know, and who are the bad people? Well, it's the realtors, of course, not the government's responsibility. See, there is another realtor. That's my competition right there. See, there is my competition is living right in this property. But anyways, let's talk, um, you know, talk about my competition. I, I love other agents anyways. I want to say, you guys, that person takes the responsibility of taking the mortgage, defaulting on the mortgage, probably even losing money. Not to, If the market goes up, they make money. If the market goes down, they lose money. If there's something breaks down, it's their problem. They have to maintain, they have to provide the washing machine, the dryer, you know, the, the things have to be, the plumbing, any leak, any flood, any nonsense happening to the property. You know who is in the hook? It's the landlord, it's the investor. So I believe that the landlord as an investor are social, you know, working on social cause. You know, so they are not the ones responsible for the housing prices. It's the government who is responsible for the housing prices. It's the lack of housing. That's number one. Number two, they're serving the social cause. Yes, uh, they're providing this relief for all people who don't want to deal with all of this. You know, they, like you can get a property. You can buy a property. You don't have to worry about defaulting on the mortgage. You don't have to worry about the property prices going up or down. You have monthly payments. You can cancel your lease and a lot of legislation can are protecting tenants actually, not the landlords. So, you know, the landlords are on the hook, not the tenant. So you have this freedom and flexibility of changing house. You don't like that house, switch a house. You change the landlord. You go to a different place and you can change the cities and no liabilities. You don't have to pay the, you know, you're just paying the rent, but you don't have to pay principal and interest. Um, you know, you don't have to depend on the market, on the, on the real estate market, like property value. Okay, you purchase the property, you just lost $200,000. It just doesn't happen with the tenants. Just paying monthly payments. So in that way, I believe those investors, they provide housing. They provide a service to people who do not want to have the headache of maintenance costs, depreciation of the property, risks mortgages, the pain of saving for a down payment, 5%, if you're buying a property, let's say, 
for down payment and other things. And well, you can change your housing like that. You're not stuck within one city. You have all these freedoms, you know, and it's so much relieving like that. So if you look at that, I don't think it's evil. I think it's justifiable for those investors to buy property. But for some reason, there are communist uh, minded government who just wants to go on the people who don't see the entire picture and make votes happen, you know, they come up with the ridiculous regulations where they are saying, well, you know, if you are, you know, if you are a middle class Canadian, you are automatically a wealthy Canadian. If you just own a house, you are a freaking pure evil. You shouldn't own a house. So if you're an old person that is, uh, that the inflation went up, the government of Canada is like, we'll tax the inflation, so you pay tax on inflation. We'll take the money from that equity gain tax, let's say, from primary residence, if you're an old person that they're proposing right now, you are basically, when your house well, inflated $1.5 million and you're a retired person on a fixed income, they're like, yeah, it's not much. We'll take just, you know, $6 billion in taxes from 1.4 million Canadian families and we'll just we'll just give it to the people for their down payment. So that once their properties go up, we can do the same thing. And this way, we kind of make it fairer to everybody else. You know, guys, how communism started on fairness. Everyone wants to be fair, you know, but actually the fairness is actually the unfair part about it is, is uh, that now that person who is an old person, senior person, has a fixed income because the economy got so screwed up, inflation is so high, they are barely making their ends meet. Maybe their house is paid off, but whatever they saved up through their lifetime, they don't have a luxury lifestyle. And the only thing that they have behind them that provides them any kind of support is the equity wealth that they built over the past 30 years. Uh, basically, their houses, a lot of Canadians, the houses are their retirement funds. And let's, well, let's tag them. Well, why are they living such a... Like, everyone is not feeling good, so let's, let's just take the overall standard of living of Canada and just freaking destroy it. Let's just make it below what it is. Let's not just, you know, let's call a middle-class Canadian rich and everybody else as just, and then we'll go and tax so-called rich. I'm not talking about rich. I'm talking about Justin Trudeau is a rich guy. I'm saying about, you know, other guys in the politics who come out of rich families, rich kids, actually rich kids. They're, those are the rich guys. But guys, if you, if somebody of you on this channel is making more than $50,000 in Canada, you are not rich. Honestly, guys, uh, I think it's very unfair that a lot of people are making on less than $50,000 with freaking current prices. It's insane how expensive it is. There's some kind of motor running here. I'm just saying that not to justify the poorness or to call anyone, you know, lazy or anything. I'm just saying that the government of Canada seems to me like are punishing success and encouraging laziness. So if you do more, you pay more taxes. If you do less, you get more benefits. If you don't do much, you get social services. If you don't do well, they'll give you health, down payment assistance and everything. So it's, they're encouraging people to do less to receive more. And this way, the overall economy, the capitalistic progress of the country is getting slammed, just freaking destroyed, guys. So that's what I wanted to say. The government of Canada is going on a communism way where the country that I was born in called Soviet Union, when I was doing my immigration in Canada, I actually had to change my birth certificate. I have to order a new one to put Ukraine into it because you can get your permanent residency or, or immigration done if you were born in a country that doesn't exist. So I had to go and order a new one and uh, God damn it, did I change a country from a communist country to another communist country? I just hope not. But I just want to say guys, those people who haven't seen communism and side effects and after effects of that, of where the entire country is so poor, where the entire population is so broke, you know, guys, I don't want to be even recalling my, my moments from my childhood that I experienced in 1990s where my parents' entire life savings was taken away by the government, eaten up by inflation. I don't want that to happen in Canada. And we need to fix this because it all started like a great vision, like a great idea. And then everyone got robbed. And then when everybody is broke as poor and every, people are living on coupons, you know, like food coupons so you can go and get yourself some eggs and you know uh, dairy and cereals 
you go like to a food bank and you have an assignment because you don't have the money and you get those coupons that's what my country was when i was when i was a, you know a kid uh, from stories from my parents it's pretty pathetic and uh, you have assigned housing where you cannot afford the house so the government uh, assigns you a house depends on how many family kids you have so you better produce more kids so you have a bigger house given to you by the government for free because you cannot own a house and actually it's you were assigned to a property like a slave to the land so they would assign uh, assign your name on that property you don't allow to own it but you live there so you don't have to pay like a mortgage, which is great. I mean, isn't it a great idea? I think that's a, I think that's a great idea for, uh, for our current government to, to listen to this video and come up with this idea. Hey, why don't we just take everybody else's houses, say it all belongs to the state, and then we'll assign it justify, uh, justly. So we don't have this uh, division in the society so that everyone is poor and you have the state in charge of this. Guys, there is lots of books, there is lots of things and, you know, this is the, the really dark pathway to go to. And this is not the capitalistic West that, you know, my guys don't head into that direction. You know, Russia went in that direction, my country went into the direction. There is still war going on back home because of this going that direction. Because there seem old people who cannot leave that you know, mentality behind, who want to have power, and ultra-rich, ultra-wealthy government people, ultra-corrupt as well, you know, and extremely poor society that has to give up lives for what the government decisions were made. Anyways, I'm just telling you guys, don't bring this nonsense to Canada, and this is what actually is happening. So I wanted to share with you guys, and I think I just wanted to point out, it's not a path that Canada should be going into. We should find another alternative solution to build more housing. And, you know, you'll see. If, if Canada keeps on going doing that, all the investors will take their money and move to the United States. Those guys have enough money to get the immigration. You know, those guys, like, literally, if you're a homeowner in Toronto with a paid-off house, you probably have enough how, uh, money to go as an investor. I think it's like $1.2 million you need only to get your... Uh, green card in the United States or you can do for less if you're a business owner you can transfer your business and get a business visa and do your immigration and just work there you know just pay your taxes there and take away the entire productivity out of this country so uh, that's what might happen so it's kind of becoming a communist country I want to ask you in the questions down below let me know what you think and compare with what I said and tell me do you think it's becoming a communist country or not see you in the next video bye for now